hello hello good afternoon it still feels like first thing in the morning to me i don't know why today maybe it's the rain and the dreariness of how it is outside that has me feeling like it's eight o'clock in the morning and i cannot get myself going i'm trying to put some pep in my step but i'm dragging how many of you out there have days like that when you just can't get motivated to do something. Well, instead of beating yourself up, <clears throat> excuse me, take care of yourself. And what I mean by taking care of yourself is do something you enjoy doing that's just for you. Not because it was mandated, not because it was suggested, like I'm suggesting now, but I don't mean that, not because it's recommended, but something you enjoy doing. Hi, I'm author Andrea Joyce, author of 31 Ways to Self-Care. If you have not purchased your book, you can purchase it on Amazon, Kindle, and from my website, um, an authorandreajoyce.com, www. Um, and in the book, I talk about something I love doing. One of the things I love doing, I'm a writer. My first love was reading. I loved reading when I was little. I liked being taken away to whatever I was reading. One of my favorite books growing up was Nancy Drew. I also loved Encyclopedia Brown. Yes, I have. I love mysteries. I like the clean cut mysteries. I don't like the ones that give you nightmares at the end of the night. So I read now uh, the Murder She Wrote series. I meet those. I read those like Donut Shop, Pizza Shop, those um, other. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Those other mysteries like that. Those you know, not too gory, not too creepy. I don't want to you know, stay up all night long. But reading for me is a way of escape. I also read for business. I read for ministry. I read for personal development. I read for growth. I read for self-care, just to learn things. And so I want you to do whatever it is you enjoy doing. So reading for pleasure, read something maybe you read back when, read something new, uh, something just to escape from whatever your day is looking like. Um, if it's not reading, watch something on television. I know so many times we tell you, do not watch TV, work on your purpose, do not uh, waste moments, work on your purpose, don't do anything that's not beneficial to your future for your purpose. But I'm also here to say we're talking about self-care. You're not going to effectively walk into business, walk into purpose, walk into education, walk into whatever your calling is if you're not taking care of you. I'm not saying you can't walk into it, but you want to enjoy it when you get it. You want to be stress-free. You want to have some fun activities. So read a book, watch a television program, and I always say this, Watch something that'll make you laugh or cry or something you'll enjoy, something you can pick up and put down. Sometimes I get caught up in watching and binge watching something that I can't put back down. So now instead of 30 minutes or 60 minutes of watching one thing, I'm binge watching 24 hours later. I'm still up. I'm, I've lost sleep. I didn't get rest. I didn't uh, exercise, I didn't eat properly because I wasn't able to cook, so I had to throw something in the microwave that might not have been healthy. I'm drinking soda because it goes with the unhealthy thing I'm eating. So something that you can pick up and put down quickly, um, a sitcom, um, an episode of something that you won't be stuck on. You can watch one and walk away. Remember the Lay's commercial back in the day, you can't just eat one? Well, don't pick something you can't just watch one or you can't spend time with for 60 minutes. I would not suggest going over 60 minutes unless it's a movie. So I'll give you two hours. I'll give you two hours, 120 minutes to watch something. Uh, if that's not your thing, listen to music. But here's the thing now. When you're listening to music, I don't mean listen to music and work because we can do that. 
I mean, take yourself away from your atmosphere, away from your work, away from your purpose, away from your planning, your business and all of that and move aside somewhere. I'm really big on putting things in the place that they need to be in. So your business area, your work area, your office area needs to be your business work and office area. For me, and I'm, I'm, I'm being transparent, that's all I know. I have my office in my bedroom. I do uh, work from home sometimes, right? At a company that I, I work for. And you have to have uh, an area to work with. Back in the day, I used to have my laptop on my bed. And I would do my work from bed and never use the, the desk format I have. I have a table, I have a huge picnic table, you know, the ones that fold in half. I think this is six foot because I needed a lot of room because I hate feeling like this when I write. And I'm blessed that my bedroom is big enough that it can house a six foot table. Here's the other thing. My table is set up in front of my window. I'm blessed in my room to have two windows, one window, faces the parking lot, the other window faces the beautiful greenery. Unfortunately, my desk isn't over by the greenery, it's by the parking lot. So even when I open up my window, I don't get to see the beauty. I have to turn this way in order to see the trees and the birds and the bees and the butterflies and nature and it's beautiful, it really is. But I think it's a good thing too because I don't wanna get distracted by the beauty of something that I'm not doing my work. So I open up my window so I can let some sunshine in or let the rain come down and I watch it sometimes and then I get back to work. So I have this six foot table right in front of my window and then I have my laptop. Because I work for a work from home company, I have to have more than one monitor screen. My laptop is little. When I purchased it, the main goal for my laptop was for me to take it wherever I wanted to take it. I had a bigger size when I wanted to condense and go down to something smaller. Unfortunately, what happened was when I would take my laptop to bed, I wouldn't rest because I'm up on the laptop. I'm typing, I'm writing, I'm getting the book together, da da da. When I finished writing one of my books, God reprimanded me a little bit and said for your editing you cannot edit in bed because you're falling asleep that's how i was making some mistakes in uh, one of the books i'm writing um not you know i edit it after but i'm just saying while i was writing i'm falling asleep like this and typing and fingers are pressing and so when it came to editing god moved me from my bed and said you need to have an area where you edit where you write, where you do ministry, where you work on your productions, where you work on everything. You can no longer do it from bed. So I put my workspace together in order to be able to do my business on this side and have my rest and recreation on that side. So my bedroom is actually in two pieces. This, what you see, is my office space. Now you can see a whole lot going on in the background. I know I need to clean up, straighten up, but my room catches everything. So because I work for a work from home program, I needed two monitors. My laptop is small, it's condensed, right? It's, it's probably not even a 15 inch monitor. Um, it, it might be a 13. So, you know, I'm getting older now, hence you see the glasses that I wear sometimes. I don't wear contacts. Um, I'm still fighting the having to wear glasses beyond reading. <laughs> I can still see without them. <clears throat> anyway, so my laptop is condensed. I have a monitor and I was like, you know, I need to be able to see information because this is uh, information you can't make mistakes on. So I don't want to make a mistake. So I need to really be able to see. So I got a secondary monitor. So my table houses two monitors and a laptop. Um, I have the light, I used to have it on this side. I'm gonna get another lamp for that. But for working, I wanted a lamp on this side so it can go over the whole table. 
I also have a table side lamp and I have about 1500 notebooks because I'm writing in everything. I, I like to keep things separate. So that way I know this notebook houses this information, this notebook houses. Now there's some stuff on the table that doesn't belong. I, you know, uh, I have to clean up, I told you. But this is my workspace. I used to have a folding chair. The folding chair was the most uncomfortable chair to sit at at this table. I had to upgrade and get an office chair. Now, I'm telling you all of this for whatever reason, I don't know, no, I'm just kidding. I'm telling you this because I want you, when you are able to set up an area in your house that's for you to do work. I don't want, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want you to put all your areas together because you need to have in your mind an area where you rest, an area where you sleep, an area where you relax, an area where you let your hair down, an area for you and your family, your friends, whoever to shut down and not worry about business, work, ministry, education, whatever your area of um, whatever you're focusing on purpose and all of that. You need to have separate areas. I don't like spending a lot of money. I do like having nice things. However, I don't like spending my money. Money. My mother will tell you I was good at spending money when it was somebody else's money. But when it came to my money, I was like, oh, I was a little Scrooge. I don't want to spend my money. I'm a little, <laughs> little frugal, I, you know, but I spend what I have to now. I wasn't always this way, but the last couple of years, you know, you got responsibilities. So the chair that you see behind me is really comfortable. I got it on sale. I don't remember if it was Amazon or Walmart. Okay, here's my confession. I am a huge Amazon shopper and I am a huge Walmart shopper. I compare the two to see the lesser of the prices between two things and then I let it sit for a minute because what's great about Amazon and what's great about Walmart, and I'm always doing commercials for people and I'm not getting paid for this, but the great thing about them is that they have sales. They have surprise sales. If you see something on their site that you like and you put it in your cart and you don't purchase it right away, you'll get alerts from both companies to let you know the products you have in your cart is on sale or is a 20% discount, blah, blah, blah. And that's how I get the lesser price. I'll sit it in there because I don't want to pay the price or I may not have the money at the time. And so I do my, we talk about this, my pay me fund. We'll talk about that another time, but I use my pay me fund to get the things that I want. And so I'll put it to the side and when the sales come, I get things gradually. So what everyone sees as completed may have taken three months or six months to put together, but eventually I'll have things the way that I want them. So this is my workspace. The only things that happen over here are work and eating when I'm not working. I eat in here if we don't eat out in the dining room as a family. If everybody has something else going on, I'll eat in my room here. I don't eat in my bed. I don't like crumbs. I hate crumbs. It used to be a bad habit because I was lazy way back when and I would eat and then I have crumbs and I would have to shake out everything and wash and it became annoying to me. So for my self-care, I made a decision to not eat anywhere near my bed, right? Okay, so now, business and eating. Separate. And I'm telling you, this is another self-care tip that's in the book. Separate your time of pleasure from your time of business and work. So your body understands when you are in this area, we're working, we're focused, we're not uh, social media in unless that's a part of your purpose and your job and your business and your future. We're working. What I do, now I'm going to tell you because I do something probably that's not healthy, however I do it. I don't like working in silence sometimes. 
sometimes I need it really silent, especially if I'm writing and I'm on an, a part where I need to hear the characters. Yes, the characters talk to me. Ha, ha, ha. My um, children say I have about 2,000 people in my head because of all the things that I write. But my characters do talk to me. And if I'm on a scene, whether it's a play, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a film, whether it's in the books, if the characters are talking to me, I need silence so I can hear and speak in the voice of the character, not in the voice of Andrea. Other times I'm writing, I don't need silence. I don't want to hear silence because now I'm hearing every other, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that. So I give myself background noise. I put on the television and I put it on something that I can tune out and it's playing. I don't put on new movies. I don't put on old movies. I don't, for the most part, put on music because I'll start singing and dancing and now I'm, you know, I'm a little distracted. I put on something for me that I can tune out even if it's playing in the background. I believe it's what they call white noise. It's just noise that's going on that helps you to focus on what you're doing. That might be beneficial for you. I don't want to give you a bad habit. Um, for me, it works. It is, has worked for years. I have watched or played in the background so many shows that I love and grew up on. I don't want to say any specific ones because I don't want people like, oh, wait a minute, you're not watching my show. No, I am watching your show. However, <laughs> I needed some background noise. And so I'll have that playing. I'll do my work. And then when it's done, when I am finished for the day, I remove myself from my desk and I go either to the bedroom side of my room or I go to the dining room, the kitchen, the living room, the kids' rooms, outside, somewhere, so that my body knows my time of work is done. I have a bad habit sometimes of pushing myself past my limit. And let me share this with you too. One of the most important things for you to do is to make a schedule for yourself. I have not been doing it, but this today, one of the assignments my coaches my coach gave me was to make myself an assigned schedule. So not just a day of what I'm doing, but the time stamps that I'm doing so I can be more um, time sensitive so that I can work in a timely fashion. Because there are times when you are working towards your purpose and you know you are responsible for your purpose. You are the lead. You are the head. You are the one in charge. This is your baby. You have the propensity of doing it, doing more than what you should be doing because you want to get it done, right? But we have to put ourselves on schedule because there are other things we need to do as well. You may have a full-time job, a part-time job, a side gig. You might be in school. You may have a family. You have children. You have a significant other. You have things going on. And so you need to balance your time. Balancing is very important to keeping your schedule, uh, to keeping self-care. I'm sorry, I got distracted. So in order for you to balance yourself and to be balanced, a schedule is important. What I want to tell you though, your schedule is not written in stone. If you have to break something in your schedule, please don't fall apart. Please don't throw a tantrum. I told you in one of the conversations we had last week that God will come in and interrupt everything. God will come in sometimes and you have a strict schedule that you follow. You know what you're going to do. But now God comes in and says, go pray for mother so-and-so. Go take so-and-so to the store. Go see about. Go lay down. And you need to listen when God interrupts because God knows more <laughs> than we could ever know all combined. All 8 billion of us putting our minds together could still not know as much as God, right? So I'm saying that to you to put together a schedule, but don't let it be so concrete that it throws you off if it doesn't work. The other thing is if you get distracted, if you get sidetracked, don't beat yourself up. Just know to do better the next day. Whatever you didn't finish on that day, 
now becomes your priority for the next day. I had to learn that the hard way. I am a reformed perfectionist. Okay, a reforming <laughs> perfectionist because sometimes I get still to that. But I'm learning to release and to let go of things I cannot control. Before it would shut me down, it would be just, I would, ooh, you see, I can't even get the words out. I would be so upset because things did not go the way I wanted them to or the way I planned them to or the way I visioned and it would shut me down for like two weeks. I couldn't function. That's not proactive. That is a ridiculous way to be for myself if I have goals to accomplish because now not only did what I planned not work, I throw myself out of the loop for two weeks. So now I'm two weeks and a day behind. No, that, that's not healthy to my purpose and my future and my destiny. So what needs to happen is if something gets thrown off, if it takes two hours to do your project instead of two minutes, take that two hours, finish your project, and then come back, put down whatever you miss doing to the next day. You Do you hear me? It's very important. Don't try to fit everything you missed in the rest of your day. Let me give you an example because I, I see the looks. I see them. I feel them in the spirit. Let's say on your agenda for the day, your schedule for the day, you have um, writing for six hours of your day, right? And then you have um, shopping, grocery shopping for two hours of your day. I apologize, I'm getting messages and I just wanna make sure. Um, <clears throat> you have grocery shopping for two hours and then you have um, uh, editing for three hours, let's just say. So let's say you're in the middle of writing, 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 you're doing good, you're wonderful. You get a phone call that um, your cousin unfortunately is in the hospital, they need you to come, right? We don't plan for these things. And you're like, oh gosh, my schedule is going to be thrown off, right? And so you go there, you come back. Now you had a six hour time slot to write 3000 words, let's just say. You left, went to the hospital, you came back. Now it's time for your, I forgot what I said the second thing was, see, that's crazy. Um, grocery shopping. Now it's time for your grocery shopping, right? You've only done a thousand words. Here's what you could do. You could move, depending on what your refrigerator looks like, grocery shopping and um, editing to the next day and complete your 3,000 word goal. Let me tell you why this would be what I would do. There is something about completing a thing that boosts you to do something else. When you continue to leave things unfinished, it becomes this huge, ginormous mountain that you have to climb. And as you're looking at the ginormous mountain, you don't want to climb it. So for me, for me, this is Andrea. You don't have to follow this methodology, but... When I have stuff on my schedule, I want to finish what I start. So where I may have writing for six hours and I'm looking to write 3,000 words, if I only get to 2,000 words, if I only get to 2,500 words, I'm going to continue until I hit that 3,000 and then I have a mini celebration like, oh, you got 3,000 words. Now, let's look at the time and let's see where we are and what we need to do. If I have two hours left before it's time to relax and unwind and get ready to lay down for the day, I will go to the grocery store. Most of the times when I go to the grocery store, it's either very early in the morning or very close to them closing. So that way it won't be as packed as when people are getting off from work and all of that, the um, rush hour traffic crowd, right? And so I'll go to the grocery store. I know sometimes I have a list and we will get into that. 
goes to the grocery store, I've accomplished two things. That editing did not get done today. So guess what? Tomorrow, where I have writing for two hours, it gets pushed down and editing goes right ahead of it. So that way I'm accomplishing the things that I have scheduled in the order that I have them scheduled. They just may not happen on the day that they were originally scheduled. Does that make sense? It helps you to be able to see accomplishment. And I want to say this too, in your purpose, baby steps are so important. Baby steps. Baby steps are so important. A lot of us want to run a marathon and we fall, we fumble, and we don't get back up. We're like, forget it. I messed up. This is why baby steps are important. Take your time. If you write one word, two sentences, a paragraph, a day, guess what? That's one word, two sentences, a paragraph more than what you had yesterday. And that brings you closer to completion. Don't beat yourself up if you don't have six hours to write. If you have 30 minutes to write, that's always, I always say to people, give yourself at least 30 minutes. If you can find 30 minutes in your day to write, write your plan, do something for your business every single day. If you can't give yourself 30 minutes, then five. You are worth at least five minutes. This is your future. In five minutes, you can search online for a business plan. In five minutes, you can start that YouTube site. In five minutes, you can look up how to paint on canvas, on stretch canvas. You can do that in five minutes. You at least deserve five minutes. And I know I've probably given you about 100 tips in here, but these are things that have been pressing on me to share with you. These tips are helpful for your future. I don't know what your calling is. I don't know what your assignment is. I don't know what your purpose is, but these will help you. Caring for yourself allows you to walk into your purpose, no matter what it is. Without you being healthy, healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and relationally, it's going to be very difficult to walk into success and enjoy it. There are a lot of people who who finish and who are successful there are not that many people who are enjoying it who are living abundantly in it who have joy in it and it's because they haven't taken care of themselves they haven't taken care of their families they haven't taken care of their friendships they haven't nurtured themselves and things around them so now they're stressed and they're not enjoying it my goal is to help you live abundantly which is what our call was. One of our calls of God is to live life and to live it abundantly, right? So my mission is to help you live an abundant life because I want you to enjoy every single day of your life, even with the pitfalls, even with the stress, even with the strain. I had a stressful day two, three days ago. I'm, I, I can't even remember where I am in the week because I don't understand how it's Wednesday. But I had a stressful day about two days ago, and that stress caused me to be thrown off. Let me tell you how bad it was. I had assignments that I had to do that were due, right? My coach had given me assignments. I had done assignments for myself. There were assignments that were programmed. I had to get them done. I was upset. I was out of pocket, and I didn't do any of those assignments, none of them. I was upset, I took a shower, and I went to bed. That's all I could do. Just sit in pity for myself. I was having a true pity party. Nothing I needed to accomplish got done. The next day I woke up, I was upset with myself because I hadn't done anything on my schedule. I hadn't done anything I was supposed to. I was no closer to completing what I was supposed to complete. And so I had a talk with myself and I'm sharing this with you because even as you have a rough day, even as you are thrown off, even as you are having a pity party, remember your goal. What is your goal for that day? What is your goal for that week? What is that your goal for that month? This is another tip I have in there, making goals. Daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, half month, a year. 
you need to make goals for yourself. Well, I was upset because I didn't meet my goal, but I didn't continue to beat up on myself. I got up and I said, everything that you were supposed to do yesterday now is what you are focusing on today. Everything you had for today will be pushed off until tomorrow unless you can fit one or two things into it. We are all going to go through pitfalls. I wish I could say to you that you will never have anger. You will never have humiliation. You will never have hurt. You will never have disappointment. You'll never have betrayal. You'll never be let down. You'll never have pity parties. I wish I could tell you that, but I'd be lying to you. And I'm not going to lie to you. We will all go through things. And because we know in advance that we will go through things, it's time to strengthen ourselves to be prepared. So when those things come, pray, meditate, relax, relate, release, <laughs> to borrow from a popular show. And let those things go and continue moving. Life is life itself. No one promised that life would be easy. In that life, as you're walking towards your purpose, the enemy is coming and he com he's coming to throw you off track. The crazy thing about the enemy is that he does not only use your enemies. He uses your frenemies. He uses your friends. He uses your family. He uses your association. He even uses you to throw you off track of your own destiny and your own goals. So you have to be strong enough. I wasn't, I fell, but guess what? I got back up and I accomplished everything I needed to accomplish for the next day. So I'm telling you now, prepare yourself. Don't get off task. Don't get thrown off. Make sure that you're focused on your goals, okay? Make sure you're focused on your purpose but also live a balanced life. That means taking care of yourself financially, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. And also having time to be with your friends, have something, have time, I'm sorry, to be with your family, have time to spend me time, have time to go explore. Self-care is so important. It's all about you. You have to be healthy in order to help other people. So today, read or watch something on TV or listen to music or bake something or find a new recipe and cook something, but take some time to enjoy something you love today for at least, well, no more than two hours so it doesn't throw you off task. This is for you. If you have not purchased 31 Ways to Self-Care by Andrea Joyce, which is me, <laughs> you can find it on Amazon Kindle and on my website, www.authorandreajoyce.com. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.